good, Radam. How are you doing today? I am doing wonderful. I know we briefly spoke a few months ago when you were all hustling and getting your TLD curated set up. And yes, it's been I busy. Have, and I've seen you grow so much. And I'm, I'm, I'm super excited to have you here and have our audience and your audience get to really know the behind the scenes of how you have come and have created an audience that is so engaged with your content in just two years. So oh my goodness. enlighten so us. Much. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. And I'm also just really excited to share with you guys kind of my process. I'm, I'm by no means an expert, but I'm excited to be here and, and answer your questions and talk to you guys. Awesome. So I, I think we should start with you sharing a little bit about your design style, your design philosophy, and how you got into the business of interior designing. Absolutely. So I'm the owner of Tiffany Lee Design. We are a high-end residential firm located in Toronto, Ontario. We also do um, the outside area, so GTA and cottage country. And our design philosophy is really just that your home should be comfortable for living. It should reflect you. And we really believe that the home is such an integral part of everybody's lives. It's the backdrop for so many pivotal moments in your life. And so it should be a place that really makes you feel safe and secure and welcome and happy more than anything. You should feel happiness when you enter your home. And so that's kind of what we do and how we help clients. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And fun fact that I did not know about you before I started researching this morning. Yeah. And I found out that you worked with Sarah Richardson Design. I so did. as a young student, how did you land that job? Yes, I worked for Sarah for four and a half years, which was an amazing opportunity. I actually started working with her when I was still a design student. And it was through a uh, networking connection. Um, a friend of mine had kind of worked there and was leaving the country and she sort of put my name forward. Mm -hmm. And because at that time I had a design blog and things like that, I had, even though I was just a student, I had a body of work to show kind of what I was capable of, my aesthetic and that sort of thing. And yeah, I started working part-time when I was a student and then hired on full-time when I graduated and I was there for four and a half years. It was an incredible experience. Obviously, everybody in Canada in the design industry is very familiar with Sarah and her amazing work. So it was such an honor. I'd been watching her on TV since I was 12 years old. So it was, it was really, really an exciting um, chapter in my journey and my life. No, that's, that's very, I think, very eventful. And I'm sure you, you got to learn so much. What, what would you say now that you are on TV, you, are, you have such a big audience, how do you feel differently of, you know, having been, having following somebody like that and learning from that person and now people look up to you? Right. And, I, I don't necessarily know if that's fully sunk in for me yet, that, that people look up to me the same way I may have looked up to Sarah when I was just starting out in the industry. I think that maybe that's a good thing. I think keeping that level of humbleness is really important to me. Um, and, you know, I just feel like a regular person. So it's, it's good. I just try to be kind. Kindness is always at the forefront of my business. Um, I am try to be very generous on Instagram with my tips, sharing my time, answering questions for people who are just starting out in the industry. I offer a mentoring service for people who have more in-depth questions. Mm -hmm. So I really do try to give back to the design community, especially the young design community, people who are just starting out. I answer a lot of questions from incoming students to uh, the design school that I went to because I'm mm -hmm. on their website. So I get a lot of people reaching out to me through that. And I think that my biggest thing is just always kindness and um, genuineness to be as genuine as possible and to just help people because I had a lot of help to get where I am today so just trying to pass that forward uh, I think you I think you made some really great points and before I forget I do want to touch on the point of transparency with your audience how yeah. are you being transparent and what would you say you know like a lot of our followers are interior designers our homeowners are so interested in DIY and with them spending so much more time in their homes, they want more tips, they want more inspiration. But sometimes I feel there is that gap of being transparent where designers are not very upfront about what their process is like, right? right. It's still very behind the scenes, but you on the contrary have been here, this is what I do. 
this is how I use, these are the steps, this is the process that I follow. Yes. So what is that difference? And why is it that you have been able to really, you know, hone on that particular transparency with your audience? Yeah, I think it's really important. And I think speaking to your point, we just put out a blog post today that outlines our entire process of if you're looking to hire a designer, how it looks like if you're working with us. And I think a big part of that for me is that I think that the design industry could can be a little bit intimidating if you're not familiar with it. Mm -hmm. And so just really opening the doors to how we work and letting people in and see the behind the scenes. It's also a large financial commitment um, for somebody looking to hire a designer. And so I just want people to feel comfortable. I find that we get about 90% of our client inquiries through Instagram. Oh, wow fantastic and I think that a big part of that is that people already sort of feel like they know me and know how we work and I think we we built a trust prior to having ever actually spoken to the client which is really important and then I think another big part of the reason that I try to give a lot of tips and tricks is that I recognize that not everybody is in a financial position to hire a designer and I want to always be thinking about how I can give my audience value so even if they can't afford to hire a designer they can go to my instagram page and see designer tips and tricks on almost every post um to get ideas for how they can implement those things into their own home and then you never know maybe one day in a few years they will have the means to hire a designer and hopefully i'll be top of mind at that point and if not that's totally fine too i'm just happy to help yeah i i, I definitely see that now you know that's just your personality you're just so down to earth and you're so open and you're so welcoming to new opportunities oh, okay. and sharing the information that you have, right? Thanks. And I, I think it's very similar to what you've created with TLD Curated, your mm -hmm. line that you came up with in June, which is, I think, has the same mission that you want to bring your aesthetics in everybody home, no matter the price point. Right. Exactly. I think that's it. I think that, you know, there are a lot of designers kind of doing this um, curated shop sort of Thing right now and I think that that is what the goal is is that I recognize that not everybody can uh, afford to hire me and maybe not everybody has the eye to go out and pick these accessories for themselves but by coming to my uh, shop uh, my online shop TLD curated I've hand selected all of these items there's a mix of vintage and new so the vintage always sells quite quickly because mm -hmm. obviously it's one of a kind so we do those in really big drops and it's a really exciting day because we see sales rolling in really fast because you gotta get it or it's gone and then we also have newer things so um, with the new items we can stock multiples of um, and we can show people in our client projects for example how to style those items so that it's almost like having me step into your home and help you style without actually having to spend that price point that's awesome yeah. i think that's a lot of information for people to you know really reflect back on and if they're looking to start their own line and how can they set up a shop that is almost sold out every time you come over the new line? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> That's the thing. I mean, vintage is exciting. I will say that the new stuff doesn't move as quickly, but um, I think it's just about recognizing what your brand is and mm -hmm. bringing that brand forward into your shop so that if people have already identified with what your brand messaging is, they can see it in your shop and, and hopefully be excited about it and want it, want to make a purchase. That's awesome. Well, I, the next question that I have for you is how were you able to set yourself up for success and find your unique offering? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, I think that a big part of the reason um, that I've had the success that I've had is growing the Instagram community. I can't really emphasize that enough. And I continued to work on my Instagram presence, even when I was working for another firm. Um, and, and, you know, at that time, I lived in a small studio apartment, and then I moved to a slightly larger apartment, I was just living on my own, decorating my own spaces, showing what I could do. And, and people got excited about following that journey. And then I purchased my beach house um, a couple of years ago and I did the wow. renovation. I was very hands-on with that. I did a lot of the renovation myself. So I think that even if you're not in a position where you have a huge portfolio or um, high paying clients, there are creative ways where you can show what you're capable of. I can remember even when I back when I was applying for design school, I styled a room, I didn't have any money to do that. So I went to shops, 
I purchased things, I set up, I had it all photographed and then I returned it. I mean, <laughs> there's always ways. And if you think creatively to start, you know, building your brand. So I think that the, the really key thing is just to start um, be really interactive on social media. So I try to respond to comments. I respond to every DM that comes through. I make sure that I'm engaging with other people's feeds and stories because I think you can't expect people to show up on your feed if you're never showing up on anybody yep. else's. Um, and I think just nurturing the community, I think the organic success, and and um, engagement will flow from from engaging in just a genuine way yourself. Again, great point, and I I feel like this conversation is soon to be transitioned towards social media because it's ninety <laughs> percent of people that are finding use to Instagram, and then again, it's about the reason they engage with you is because you are sharing and documenting your journey, and that's what people want to see. That's the authentic part, and that's the organic part that people are you know like drawn to words and right i think there's been a big shift in social media whereas um it used to be people weren't really interested in me to be honest so people wanted to see the design work if i posted something about myself i would lose a bunch of followers and i stopped doing it for a long time and now i think that you know with everything going on with the economy and the political climate and the pandemic, I think people are really interested in supporting individuals rather mm -hmm. than supporting um, faceless brands. And mm -hmm. so I think that showing up on your feed, showing your audience who you are is so important. I think that, you know, when times are tight, you may not want to give business to a company who you know nothing about the people behind that company. But when you've made a connection with somebody, if, if you have a choice between this faceless company or somebody who you have a personal connection mm -hmm. with, you're nine times out of 10 going to go with the person that you have a connection with. And so I think that that landscape has really changed. And it's so important to just be showing up on your feet and showing people who you are. And, and I don't think you have to share every detail about your life. And I certainly mm -hmm. don't do that. Um, but showing a little bit of the behind the scenes and who you are as a person, I think is very important. Very well said. I think the whole shift and whole thing about people not trusting faceless brands and they've you know, really supporting individuals. And that, that's kind of what our vision is with Gaiden as well, that you're bringing designers that we see as influencers and see as thought leaders. And we believe they are far better salespeople a brand can have online because right. they're supporting them through word of mouth offline. But yes. today, if they collaborate more and more with designers, which I know you have a lot of experience with, I'm going to quickly pull out that photo where you did a collaboration with Andy. Yes. And, you know, th that's, that makes it a lot more authentic. And right. I, I know, like, people know that, yes, this is probably a paid partnership, but I can relate to this brand a lot more. And people can relate to the brand a lot more because there is a face behind Absolutely. it. Really? Absolutely. And I think, you know, that comes with the trust building side of social media as well. I hope that my audience knows that I would never partner with a company or promote a product that I haven't tried myself and really believe in. Um, mm -hmm. And so I try to be very selective and authentic with my partnerships. And I think that when you develop that connection with people, they can sense that and they trust that. And then also the fact that I'm not only sharing collaborations, I'm also sharing things that I've put my money behind and, and that sort of thing. So that when I do make a brand collaboration, the odd time, there's not like a level of distrust there. I hope that I've gained people's uh, trust. And then also I'm there to answer questions about the product that maybe you wouldn't ask, um, like just right into the company and ask. I can be kind of your sounding board for the products. Very true. You know, like, I, I also want to get into a little bit of what has been, your, what, what, what were your challenges and what's some of the best and the worst decisions you have ever made and what that resulted in on social media and then in your business? Sure. Um, best decision, I would say my best decision I've ever made is just banking on myself and making that leap into self-employment um, and entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. I think it's a really scary leap to make when you have a secure job that you really enjoy the way that I did. But I knew deep down that 
I always wanted to start my own firm one day and I, you know, I wanted that creative, that creative control. Um, I wanted to really have that connection with the clients that I could only, I felt I could only have by starting my own business and, and making that leap was extremely scary. I'm not going to lie. I didn't know if I would be able to pay my rent over the next few months, you know, but I think that believing in yourself is the best choice you can make no matter what you're deciding to do. And really, I think if you don't believe in yourself, how can you expect anybody else to believe yeah. in you? Um, so I, I think it's not always easy to do, but I do think that that's kind of the best decision you can make. In terms of worst decisions, um, I do have I do wish that I had kept up my design blog more during the four and a half years that mm -hmm. I was working for another firm just because it had some really great momentum at the time. I let it fall to the wayside because things got really busy. And now I'm, I've started a new blog and sort of starting from square one and scratch, which is totally fine. But in retrospect, I think I would have continued the blog all the way through. Um, and I think the only other worst decision that I can really think of is just in the beginning, not not always stick sticking firm to knowing my worth. So doing things like wanting the project, so negotiating rates or things like that. I, I have some regrets about that because it starts, it starts projects off on the wrong foot. I think mm -hmm. it starts a project off with you feeling a little bit undervalued. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it, it goes back to believing in yourself and knowing your worth. I think that every decision you make in your business should be reflective of knowing, knowing your worth and believing in yourself. That makes sense. Yeah, no, very true. I think I, I live by that mantra. I believe in my, I have had a bunch of failures in my life, but I think if I, I would have stopped believing in myself, I wouldn't be able to pick myself up and not get where I am. And That's uh, me. around the point where, when you say, so w would you say like designers that are starting out, if they have any sort of blog, any kind of audience that is engaged with them, they should keep building upon them. They don't need to really separate themselves. If that blog, let's say was about, um, I don't know, reviewing a coffee, like different <laughs> coffee beans, should they keep building upon it and add the home decor if that's what they're uh, transitioning into? Or is it always better to keep it separate? I think, I think it can go both ways, but I personally would probably keep building upon it. I mean, my mm -hmm. blog was always design related, but mm -hmm. having said that, I think that when you build connections with people, they are going to stick with you. I think there's a recognition in the world that people change and adapt and grow. And I know I followed lots of people on Instagram whose page started out talking maybe more about design and then they've gotten married and have kids and now their mm -hmm. page is a lot about parenthood. And I'm not a parent, so I can't necessarily relate to what their content is, but I'm still so supportive of them because I followed their journey for so long and it doesn't bother me that the transition has been made um, and I think that even if you lose some followers by transitioning what you're talking about if that's not your audience it doesn't anymore then that doesn't really matter and the people mm -hmm. who still want the content are still going to continue to consume what you're putting out into the world so I think it's probably best just to keep going on the same um, platform rather than starting completely from scratch but that's, I think, it, I'm sure both ways have their merits and their, their pluses. And do you still believe when we are so digital, when we're so, so much more visual, mm -hmm. blogs still hold a lot of value? Like, let's say I'm not a greatest writer out there. So to, if I have to start writing a blog, it'll be a challenge. But I do know that you studied English. I did, yeah. You majored in English. So that's why maybe you had a hang of writing. And you were right. able to really monopolize on that skill set that you had and then you transition into social media. So if somebody who doesn't have that skill set and they're starting out as a designer, would you still recommend them start a blog or do you think they should stick to something that they can be more authentic in sharing their experiences? I think like authenticity is always key. And also if you don't enjoy writing a blog, you're it's it's going to translate. I think people are going to be able to sense that when they're reading mm -hmm. and and i think that life is all about choosing things that you enjoy because those are the things that you will excel at 
So if you don't enjoy writing a blog post, I say don't do it. Um, focus on something you do enjoy. If it's Instagram, put all of your effort into Instagram and make that count. But if writing a blog is something that you enjoy, I think there is still merit in blog posts. I think that blog posts have definitely become more visual and less wordy, um, which also could be helpful if you're not big on writing. But I do think that blogs are still great for driving traffic to your site with Google search engines. So if somebody is Googling what white paint color should I use, for example, if you have a blog post about that, it's going to drive traffic to your site, which in turn is going to increase your algorithm in Google and yeah. SEO and all of that stuff. So I think there is merit if it's something that you enjoy doing. If you don't, I just don't think it'll ever probably get anywhere. I think everything in life in order to progress to a point of success, you should be very passionate about. One thing like I just picked right now is that when I speak to designers, many of them are, you know, a little intimidated by data, intimidated by SEO, intimidated by like how to engage my audience, how to understand this data. Yes. And on the other hand, I feel like you have really embraced it. Like yes. you don't really put your time into understanding all these things. In some ways, yes. In some, a lot of things, I will be honest, when I don't understand, I really believe in hiring the people that do understand. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I worked with a website designer. I learned about SEO from them. Um, similar to the administrative side of the business, I don't love it. So I believe in hiring that out. I think that as designers, we have our strengths and we maybe have some of the things that we're not so strong at and there's no harm in finding somebody who can do it better than you because it's only going to help you grow. That's amazing. I have a quick question for you from Annie. Yes. She's asking, do you think TikTok is something that we sh that designers or brands should try? Um, you know what? Yes, I do. Uh, I don't personally <laughs> uh, work on TikTok. Um, I think that the audience right now on TikTok is younger, um, mm -hmm. but I do think it is changing. That said, I think that the TikTok model has proven that that way of consuming content is extremely popular and that method of short video clips with uh, text and graphics and music is really the way that people are wanting to consume right now. So whether or not you do TikTok or for me, I am focusing on um, learning Instagram Reels, which is kind of Instagram's answer to TikTok. Uh, I think that there are benefits there. So I'm going with Reels just because I know that's kind of more where my demographic um, for clientele is located. That said, I have a designer friend who has gone viral multiple times on TikTok talking about design related things. So it, again, if it's a platform you enjoy, I think there is merit there. I don't think TikTok is necessarily mm -hmm. going away anytime soon. Um, but right now, I think I'm there. I've heard there's controversy about TikTok and data collection as well. So maybe who knows? <laughs> who knows? Who knows? Um, talking about platforms, uh, something that has been on our radar and we believe is underutilized uh, in terms of how to optimize it is Pinterest. Yes. So I would love for you to share your thoughts on how you use Pinterest for your design business and how has that helped you grow your business? Absolutely. So for me, I didn't have a Pinterest for my business for a very long time. I was using Pinterest in the way that most consumers use Pinterest in that I was looking for ideas, inspiration, pinning things for client projects as reference points on there. But in terms of actually using Pinterest as a tool to drive traffic mm -hmm. to my own site, mm -hmm. I was underutilizing that. And I think that was a huge mistake. I follow the Identity Collective on Instagram who helps interior designers and gives a lot of uh, tips and tricks and she talks about the fact that Instagram clicks over to her website versus Pinterest clicks over to her website it's just an insane difference something like 900 times more clicks from Pinterest um, <clears throat> than Instagram so obviously it's a very valuable tool so again recently I hired a Pinterest manager to kind of help me uh, do all that. I would love to take it on myself, but we're just, I, there's a lot going on. And so I've added somebody who knows all about the SEO and the analytics to really help get that side of my business off of the ground. So 
we're very new to the business side of Pinterest, but I 100% agree with you that it's an underutilized tool that we all need to be focusing on more. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. So we have, I believe we have three more minutes left. So okay. I'm, I'm going to ask another question that is from a designer here uh, sure. from Mubina Car Design. She's asking, how has COVID changed your business structure? Right. So, yeah, I think like everybody, COVID has affected people a lot. I um, had a few projects put on hold because construction was put on hold and also people weren't wanting a bunch of trades inside their house. We, during, when there was a lot of shutdowns, we pivoted to a lot of virtual consultations. And I think that it's something we'll continue to offer. It also allows us to work with people who don't live within our immediate area, which is very exciting. Um, <clears throat> we're relying a lot more on our vendors to send us um, product recommendations so that we're not out in stores all the time, mm -hmm. which is really actually quite been quite great to make those strengthen those relationships and those connections. But other than that, we're really just sticking to our plan. Uh, we've found that people are in their homes and really wanting to make some changes. We've been getting more requests than ever. I think that people have spent a lot of time looking at something that maybe before they were just had a lot of distractions and didn't have to focus on that, that kitchen or whatever. Um, <clears throat> so for that reason, it's, it's been exciting to see that people maybe want to make some changes. I also think people who were, you know, had money set aside to travel or mm -hmm. to eat out at restaurants a lot now have a bit of that budget to invest back into their home, which is really exciting that's awesome um well i believe we are almost out of time so i have last question and this is to do with video reviews and i'm not sure if our audience knows this that's what we do with guidance we help vendors in the home industry collect video reviews from interior designers that they can use on their website on their social media as ads or just on stories to generate more traffic and right. and conversions right I was getting a phone call, uh, <laughs> but I, I want to get your opinion on as a designer, we talked about having a face, you know, for your brand and how do you believe video reviews can help these brands engage better with designers and get more conversions for new Absolutely. accounts? Absolutely. So I think, like I was saying before, that having a professional in a field promote your pro product, I think can be so valuable especially when the designer is somebody who has built a connection with their audience has built that trust I think that the more personal anybody can make their brand the better um, and so and I also think that video content we didn't talk totally about this but I think that video content is the way you know YouTube is huge right now um, IG stories is huge I think that people want to watch videos rather than read reviews and I think that seeing mm -hmm. the face hearing the words come out of somebody who's used the product can be a lot more um, impactful than just say reading a Google review or something like that no th thank you so much thank you so much Stephanie it was such a pleasure to have you I think Thanks, we would man. definitely have to do another one to talk about just video content I think that's a huge topic and I we have been doing a lot of research on it and that's how that's what our expertise is so maybe yeah. I think we should probably jump on a call and try to figure out how can we arrange another interview with you for video reviews Schedule thank you so much, I would love that thank you thank awesome. you everyone for joining thank you guys bye. take care bye now